Hey, it's Greg Milby, Community Storyteller for Kentucky's Heartland, and this is our twice-monthly update from Hardin County Government. Deputy Judge Executive Daniel London is my guest again today. Uh, first of all, thanks for the time again, Daniel. Absolutely. Always happy to join you, brother. Enjoy right. it. So uh, lots, of, lots of questions about the closing of the northern branch of the Hardin County Library, so I'm not even going to beat around the bush. We're going to go right to that question. Just because, jump right into the briar patch. I mean, straight up, we're going to go right into it. Uh, in the briar patch barefooted everybody <laughs> has an opinion and has an idea of why the library was closed sure and but the easiest way to do this is to go right to the government and ask so the floor is yours daniel why is the northern branch of the library closed thanks and i appreciate it. hey and i'm used to the briar patch i went up to uh, the uh, radcliffe rotary club on thursday and spoke about this uh th this very subject i and, and and i want people to understand transparency is everything to to, to me and and us in Hardin Hard County government, there, there, there's nothing to hide. Um, as most of you know, when I explain this a little bit, give you a little bit of a, a long answer. Uh, the library is administered by a separate library board. Uh, that board, those board members are appointed by the judge executive, ratified for by the fiscal court. So they're in charge of overseeing and executing the budget and the strategy for for the library. Uh, we cannot dictate to them what happens. So much like the water uh, water district boards, uh, we appoint members where the judge appoints members, fiscal court ratifies them. They go serve uh, fiduciary duty to the customers and, and patrons of uh, the water district. Uh, the judge can go in uh, to one of their meetings, stand on a desk, tell them you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And they can tell him right back, we're not going to do that and we're not going to do what you tell us to. So they are they have autonomy. Uh, at that point. Uh, so the library board, uh, which was established uh, in the in the late 70s, um, in, in this case, made the decision that it was in their fiduciary duty uh, for them to close the library and administering the budget because they, in their opinion, had no longer had the funds necessary to sustain two locations. To talk about their revenue stream just a little bit, uh, in 1980, uh, the, the then library board filed suit against the county uh, because they did not have a sustainable uh, funding stream. And part of that circuit judge uh, uh, judge's ruling was that the county had to provide them 10% uh, of the property tax receipts uh, each, uh, each year, which accounts eh, about a million dollars. Uh, right now that they receive. And that, that percentage is based upon the fiscal court taking the maximum 4% each year, whether they take that raise or not. Uh, so they still have to pay them that money, even if we're not uh, not receiving it. Uh, so they, they have said the million dollars we receive each year will not sustain two locations. Therefore, one of them have to have to, has to close and that closure is going to be uh, Radcliffe. Uh, so that's where we stand. And there's, they're making the argument uh, at this point, uh, barring any further further funding, uh, they will not be able to open that branch back up. So is there maybe potential that that branch could open back up or is that just a done deal now? Well, at this point, you know, of course, I, I would never say never, uh, but there's going to have to be more funding. Uh, Judge Barry has argued as well as a few fiscal court members over the last few years that there needs to be a sustainable uh, funding source, a more sustainable funding source for the library systems. The county does not have the financial ability, which is accurate, to carry the library or to give it more funding. Uh, the million dollars that they receive each year uh, with our constrained resources and austere budget uh, is already a bit of a strain. Um, to, to accomplish that, uh, the library board would have to be, would have to morph, if you will, um, into a taxing district. Uh, that's the only mechanism allowed by, by state law. Uh, if that were done, then they would levy a property tax, uh, which right now would be three cents on uh, on every hundred dollars of value, uh, which would give them about three million dollars a year uh, to operate the library system. Now, having said that, just because they get the revenue and the tax doesn't mean they then have to open the Radcliffe library branch back up. Now, the expectation obviously would be to do that. But again, I want to stress they're an autonomous board now and they would be even more autonomous if they were a taxing district so they could they could in theory uh, receive that extra tax funding and not open up a second branch uh, in, uh, in 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 Radcliffe uh, so I, I would urge uh, the community if this is something that that that, that you're interested in uh, want to advocate for then you certainly need to be in contact with those board members 
So, and, and you were just at the Radcliffe Rotary Club, and, and, and give you a second, because uh, Rotary Club is one thing, but give you a, a second to talk to the, the citizens of Radcliffe, which they, they, they've they lost a little bit uh, over the last year or so. There's been some things taken away from them. What do you uh, tell a citizen that kind of feels like maybe um, they're losing more than they should in the city of Radcliffe? Sure. You know, I, my, my wife said it best, actually, when I told her of, uh, of this news, and, and by the way, she's, she's a library patron, uh, loves it. And uh, as do as do I, I'm not there as much as I, I need to be. But um, her, her exact comment was, wow, Radcliffe is really taking on the chin lately. Um, and I think that I think that sums it up. Um, unfortunately, the budget outlook that we're facing as a county uh, and this goes, it's not just county government. It's all municipalities uh, with the increased budgetary strains of unfunded mandates that are being put on us. Uh, by Frankfurt, it, it's making it incredibly difficult. Uh, let's talk about pensions for just a minute. Um, of course, you've heard Judge Barry talk about this uh, a great deal, but it's a very real problem. My my salary, for example, and this goes for every county employee that's not hazardous duty, uh, I put in 6% for my retirement each year. The county has to match that right now for about 23%. So 23% of my salary they have to put into the pension system. That's going to 28%. When I came on board of the county, a hazardous duty employee such as EMTs, paramedics, deputy sheriffs, that rate was 32%, it's going to 48%. Uh, that is another million and a half to $2 million um, uh, liability for the county. That money has to come from somewhere and we don't have it as it stands right now. That has been, those increases have been phased in. So um, you, you're seeing property tax increases, you're seeing government services cut as a result of those liabilities. If we don't get relief from that, this kind of trend, unfortunately, is going to, uh, going to continue. Mm. Well, um, well, you're just yeah, really not sure we want to see. And, and particularly, and I'll say on libraries, I, it, it bothers me a great deal to see a library close, uh, particularly in, if you look at the socioeconomic conditions across the county, where you need a library the most is, is the one that's being closed. Uh, Redcliffe needs, needs that the most economic development uh, jobs aside. I, I certainly feel that our number one responsibility as a society is education. If we can't get that right, then then everything else just do, we're doomed on. Uh, so we, we, we have to find a way in this community and it's going to take or take sacrifices from both sides uh, to make sure we have a viable education system. Um, education systems are a mesh of services and library, public libraries being one of those. We're going to have to find the right ingredient to make that work. Right. Well, you're cool. just full of all kinds of great news. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> uh, on, I'm sorry. Yeah. So uh, to, to the, the the second question uh, yes. to have for you today is that, you know, we're noticing some wear to some of the roads around Hardin County. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about this a little bit. How is the road budget look and how are roads chosen for repaving here in the county? Yeah. So, you know, again, I outline we, we're on austere uh, budget. We, we actually are about a million and a half dollars light each year from what we need to sustain our road system uh, here in Hardin County. Uh, so at, at, at about the same point last year, we were at 21 roads that needed paving at, at that very moment. We whittled that down. I say whittled it down. It, 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 we haven't gotten it down as far as we'd like to, but right now we stand at about 15 roads. Uh, that need paving right right this moment. If we if we had money, uh, we're going to get that down uh, a, a little bit more this uh, this year. We actually had some additional funding come in from the state, uh, which of course is phenomenal news. You and I were talking about Gaither Station earlier. That's on uh, on the horizon within the next uh, year to two years. Uh, we just completed Thomas Road. Um, I, yeah, I compared it. It was it, it was one of the worst in the county. Uh, the worst probably Blue Ball Road. Um, it, it felt like you were going over a cobblestone. Uh, road that's missing most of those cobblestones it just so is that a <laughs> unique situation it seems like uh i was reading where that's uh kind of a test situation is there with what with, with the type of asphalt they're using it is so uh with thomas uh, thomas road we the state runs a grant uh, each year we've been fortunate uh, and that's that's because of a, a few factors we've worked it hard at the county level and our uh, state legislators have really have helped uh, helped us out. Uh, that's actually two grants in a row we've received on rubber rubberized uh, asphalt. So they take um, uh, rubber chips, melt us down with the uh, with the asphalt. Um, they have, the state has a program as part of their recycling program uh, that they're taking these uh, uh, rubber chips and mixing that in with asphalt to see if the the road lasts longer. So in theory and test, uh, it's supposed to last about ten years longer. 
And uh, so they're, they're putting it out in the real world to see if that is in fact the case. So it, w once you receive one of those grants, you have to do the, the state will pay for uh, the first mile and the rubberized asphalt. And then we have to do the next mile uh, adjacent to that uh, in regular asphalt. So that way they, they have a test strip, if you will, uh, for the long term to see how those hold up against each other. So Thomas Road was done in that uh, in that material. Uh, to the common driver, you're not going to notice the difference. Um, but uh, we're hoping that lasts longer. It's, it's higher cost, but if you get the 10 extra years, uh, then it balances out to, to work actually saving saving money. So we we have a uh, we have quite a few roads that that, that need some work. So how do, how, yeah. how does that list get put together? I mean, uh, so we, do you we throw have it in a hat or what? <laughs> any mini mighty mo uh no we uh so we we have a total uh parks are just shy of 600 miles of road in Oregon county so we have one of the largest networks countywide uh, of any county in, in in kentucky so as you imagine that's a lot of that's a lot of roads uh, our road department who has 26 employees obviously they're out on our county roads every day so they're constantly monitoring those to see which ones are in in, in cycle or in the most most need uh so I've, we have a list of all of our roads uh when they were resurfaced and, and so we know when they're coming up in, in their life cycle and then we begin more intense monitoring then at that point to see because conditions can change based upon weather and every black top surface surface is, is different based on uh, the base that's under it and whether it has failures and so on so the roads we think should be black top today may actually change in six months. Um, so we can't say at a budget year, uh, at the beginning of a budget year, so we don't prepare our budget saying we're going to resurface X roads this year. We, we put in as much money as we can, and then we monitor those roads and whichever ones are the worst are the ones that get to resurface that point based upon uh, inspection. Again, those conditions change. Thankfully, we haven't had awful winters in the last uh, last couple of years, so that's helped us a little bit. Uh, we're, we, um, in fact, we just approved this last court almost four hundred thousand dollars. It's coming down from the state where we're going to get some more roads um, replaced. We've got a bridge we're replacing this year at a tune of about two hundred thousand that we wish we were putting into asphalt, uh, but unfortunately aren't. Uh, so we we've been the lucky recipient. Uh, of uh, several hundred thousand dollars here in the last uh, few months from the state that we're going to put uh, put in. So we we are down right now from 21, as I mentioned before, about 15 roads that need resurfacing. We're hoping to get that to 10 or under uh, by the uh, by the end of this fiscal year, so in, uh, July, June, July of next year, and then hopefully get that whittled down uh, some more. But we we are in dire shape when it comes to funding. Again, we need about another million and a half dollars to really keep our keep our roads uh, where they need to be. And as you know, the longer you go without maintaining them, the more costly and the worse, uh, worse it gets. So uh, we, we've got to get ahead of this. All right. Well, I'm going to stop while I'm ahead because uh, you are not really giving me a lot of <laughs> I don't want you to start crying. Huh? <laughs> no, I can tell you. Hey, uh, thanks. Thanks for the update on the library. And I, I, I appreciate you uh, just being candid and honest and, and, and sharing all that. And and on the roads as well. Maybe next month I'll, I'll come up, uh, the, the next one we do in a couple of weeks, I'll come up with some fuzzy puppy news for you. Okay. Yeah. Let's do something, uh, do something that we can uh, have some cheer with. All right. Good deal. He's Daniel London, deputy judge executive of Hardin County. I'm Greg Milby, community storyteller, and this is our twice monthly Hardin County government update.